Hi, my name is Rachel. We're going to talk about how to repair the hydraulic system on your Ford tractor. I'm standing next to an 8N Ford, but the techniques that I'll show you do apply to a Ford 9N, a Ford 2N, a Ferguson TO20, or 30 tractor. There will be some differences. For the most part, you will be able to follow along. So the problem with some tractors is that there is a drift with the three-point arms when you have a load, like you put a brush hog on your three-point, and it slowly drifts down, which you don't want to happen. So a way that you can solve that is within your relief valve. So you can easily look through this uh, door. This is the door that the dipstick on, and this is the one that you will want to take off. If you take the door off on the other side, you'll have to uh, do some corrections with the PTO. So you can avoid that by taking the door off on this side. And then you can look inside there and see what's happening with the oil. So when you have a load on your three-point hitch arms, you may see that your oil is bubbling up on the uh, bottom of your tractor, which is relieving. So therefore, there might be a problem within your relief valve. I have a hydraulic pump here removed from the tractor, and this is an example of a relief valve. It has a spring on the end there. It comes as a complete assembly as a part from Steiner. You can easily reach in there, and uh, with a short wrench, you can remove the relief valve that's inside the tractor, and then you can just replace that relief valve. See how easily it screws right in there? So that, that is a fix you can make without taking apart any uh, part of the tractor that's major, and give that a try. Replacing the relief valve doesn't solve all of your problems. Sometimes it will solve all your problem if that's the only problem that you have. And, but there, you might need to make some further steps, which would be within repairing the top lift cover of your tractor, which I will show you now. To begin repairing your top lid, you'll need to take your seat off. Normally there's just two bolts in the bottom here that hold it on. So you can take those out, and then your seat will just lift right off. The next part that you want to take off is uh, this part of your three-point system here. You can remove either this pin or this pin, whichever is easier for you to get out. And then you'll leave it attached down at the bottom here. Also leave your chain attached as well. So I'll pull that pin out. This is loosened for me, obviously. You might have a little bit of trouble getting that pin out. Um, if you do, just stick with it and get those pins out to get them removed. There's a pin here as well. You can use a, a brass hammer and a punch to try to um, help you release that if you need to. Have some help pushing that through. That. And then this part pulls right off. I just removed all of the bolts from the outer perimeter around here. You'll notice that there are different lengths of bolts. There's long, medium, and short. When you take yours out, pay attention to where they came from so that when you put them back together, you can get the right lengths in the proper places. Only take bolts out of the outer perimeter here. Do not remove these four, as that holds the piston up under there, and you want that part to come out with the top lid when you remove it. So only take the bolts out of the outer portion of this top lid. Uh, once that is out, you can go ahead and pry that off. You'll notice uh, when you're looking at the video here that this is hot. We had to torch that off. You might have to go to extreme lengths like that if you have a pin that's really stuck in there. Also, I want to mention that I did take the tire and the fender off just for demonstration so that you can easily see. When you make this repair yourself, you don't need to do that. So you just take your pry bar and you mm, pry up. I might not be able to do this myself. I might need some help. Uh, so you pry up, this will pop in between there where the top lid is and the base of your tractor. It'll pop up and then we'll get some help lifting it off. I put a lifting bolt into my seat hole. I just put the bolt in there so that it would attach easily to my cherry picker. Since I've already loosened the top lid, it should lift right off. If you are working on a 9N or 2N Ford, a Ferguson TO20 or 30, you do not want to just lift straight up with your top lid as you'll wreck a, a wishbone that's within the compartment. So this technique only works for 8 end to lift straight up. So once that is hooked up, you can just lift up. You can see the compartment coming out with it. We'll lift it right up and we'll move it over to our bench.
Here's a close-up view of what would be inside either a 9N or 2N Ford tractor or Ferguson TO 20 or 30. This is your wishbone or T-joint that you'll see inside. Um, if you just look through that compartment where the dipstick is that we removed, you'll see this in here. There will be two ball sockets on either side, so you want to just uh, pull those off. This portion will stay inside the tractor, and then you can lift the top lid off so that you can make the rest of the repairs. You'll notice on our tractor there's oil dripping down the side here. That's evidence of a gasket that is leaking. Maybe when it was installed it wasn't completely clean, either on the transmission portion or on the top lid. And that might be the same case on your tractor. It can leak on the outside or on the inside, either place. Uh, here I'm in this cup I have some boiling water and I put my leather gasket in there to soak. It looks like this one so that it can uh, easily stretch over the part when we're ready for that. So you might want to get yours ready as well. Uh, next, we're going to take those four bolts off that I talked about earlier that hold the piston on the underside of the top lid here so that we can remove this part out completely. I just took my last bolt out here on the top portion. Now that that's out, we're going to go ahead and uh, push these through. You might need to use a soft brass, tam brass hammer to get those out. All the bolts will remove, and then this cylinder will come out and then we can get to the piston behind it. I tried to release the piston from the cylinder by beating it, but couldn't get it out all the way. So I'm going to take some air, blow it through this hole, and hopefully that will be enough pressure to push the piston out and it will come into my trash can. Just like that. We're gonna go ahead and put some seals onto our piston. So first we have a rubber o-ring seal which just slides on there easily and you just put that down within the groove there. It's very important that you get the o-ring seal and the leather seal in the correct order. So notice that I have the o-ring on there, I pushed it all the way that way and then I'm going to wrap my leather seal around there. This is the seal that I've had soaking in water so that it goes on a little bit easier. Uh, I am using, in my hand right here, I have a Jubilee piston, even though we're working on an 8N Ford tractor. And that is just an upgraded style. I have the one out of the 8N here, you see that it has three rings on it, and that this is a different style. It still goes in there. It's just an upgrade so that uh, your tractor will function a little bit better. You squeeze that leather in there, make sure it's not twisted, wrap it all the way around, and then we'll be ready to insert it into the cylinder. Just trying to get it so it's not twisted. This is the last section here. And there it's in there. So you can see the O-ring and then the leather behind it. That's the same way that you want to be sure to get it in that order. That's really essential to get it in this order on your tractor. I'm putting some lube over this piston so that it slides into the cylinder easily. I'm just going to rub that all around there. And now we're going to drop it into the cylinder. This is a replacement cylinder that you can purchase from Steiner. I'm choosing to replace it. You may not have to. Our cylinder was wavy from years of use of this going back and forth. Um, you could, once you put new seals onto your piston, you could insert it back into your old cylinder and it would probably be okay, but once we're this far into the job, might as well just replace that piston. So then you can just beat it down with a rubber hammer and push it in there. You only want to push it down about halfway and then we'll be on to our next step. There is a quadrant draft control pin right here. I hope you can see it. I'll point to it with my finger and then I'll also show you with a screwdriver so that you can make sure that that is indeed on your tractor. Lots of times that does get broken off. If yours is broken off or if it's extremely worn, you'll need to replace it. This is uh, an example of the pin that you can buy to replace it. This one came from uh, Fastenal and it's a .490 diameter, just under half inch. And that's the pin that you can use to replace it. It is kind of challenging to replace that part. Uh, you need to heat it up with a torch and then you can uh, make that repair. Next, we'll talk about the gaskets here. This is the head gasket for the piston. Uh, we'll want to take that off completely 
And then we'll also want to take off this head gasket and get it very clean so that we can get a good seal on a new one. I finished cleaning this whole surface so we're ready for the new gasket, but first I want to talk to you about the spring on the end. If your spring is sloppy at all, like it moves around, then you'll want to replace this part. This is called the spring seat support. It's a sheet metal piece that holds this whole portion of it together and controls the hydraulics in this spring, holds the tension there. So ours does not need to be replaced because it's sturdy in there, but if yours is sloppy, you'll definitely want to remove that. You remove it on this end and it comes out, and then you can replace that portion of your top lid. Next, let's talk about the cylinder here. You can see that I've put two gaskets here. They're ring gaskets. I put some uh, gasket sealant underneath that, and I'm going to go ahead and put some on um, these holes as well. You just brush it around there, and then we'll set the gasket on. In a little bit, I'll put some gasket sealer all the way around this surface with special attention to this portion here because that's where there's a lot of stress on the gasket. So the gaskets are set there. Now this is the cylinder with the piston already inside of it that we uh, inserted earlier. So this drops into there and then you set this on top of here. Oops. It is a little bit tricky to get these bolts lined up. Use the same square head uh, bolts that you took out previously and they will drop right down in there. This one I can see. Oops. I'm going to have a little bit of trouble. You take I'm set that on there. This gasket did wiggle a little bit, so I'm going to fix the gasket on this end. There we go. And then we'll set all four of those bolts down in there. There we go. Finishing the sealer all around this top portion where the gasket's going to go. We're going to also put some sealer on the transmission so that there's sealer on both sides of the gasket so that we get a really good seal there. If your hydraulics do not work on your tractor at all under a load, when you have your equipment on there and it just won't respond, one reason might be within this uh, lever here. You can replace this plate. This is what the replacement part looks like. You'll see with that when I move this handle, this rod responds. It should. If yours doesn't, then you might want to replace this part so that your rod will respond. This rod should be straight. You don't want it to be bent at all. It may be bent if, you, um, if your pin was broken here, it would be compensating for the broken pin and that might bend the rod. When we drop this into the tractor, you want to make sure that the rod does fall in the proper place in the valve so that it will uh, work properly. Another reason why your uh, hydraulics might not work at all underneath the load might be because of this plate that we already talked about. Um, you might want to replace that support. You would do that just by moving this nut and that would come, this whole portion would come out you'd be able to replace that support. Now that our top lid is all repaired, we're ready to drop it into the tractor. This loop is where the rod needs to fall. It needs to fall directly in there. This is the valve that controls the hydraulic pump. We're lowering the top lid down now. I am making sure that this uh, rod is going to fall into the, the proper part. Also notice that we have our gasket here. It just kind of falls right down in there. You want to direct it. I might need to reach in there and it's doing good so far. Okay, come on. Our lid's in, our rod is connected into our valve, 
Now we're just going to put all these bolts in here all the way around the perimeter. I replaced my dipstick cover here. I took the old gasket off and put a new gasket on with a sealer on both sides. Put all the bolts on and then put the dipstick back in. You will want to drain the old hydraulic fluid out of your tractor. There's a plug at the bottom of your tractor that looks like this. You just remove it. There's a gasket that comes out with it. Remove your old gasket, put a new gasket on. Once the oil is completely drained out, then replace your plug back into the tractor. Then you're ready to add your new hydraulic fluid. Uh, this is modern transmission and hydraulic fluid. Your manual will probably call for some type of different hydraulic fluid. Uh, technology has advanced, and so this is what we use now. It covers both your transmission and your hydraulic. You'll need five gallons of this fluid. Just pour it right into your tractor. Be sure to assemble your three-point hitch back together now that your top lid and everything is on. You'll have a pin here and then a pin on both of your three-point arms. Now we're going to talk about some adjustment. I'm going to start this tractor up, show you how the three-point works. If it needs some adjustment, we'll go ahead and do that. Anytime you start your tractor and you're standing here, always make sure that it is in neutral. Then they went all the way down. When I have the uh, handle here at halfway, the hydraulics are halfway up. That's how your hydraulics should function. If they don't, maybe they don't go up all the way or they don't go up, down all the way, you can make an adjustment here within this plate. Make sure that your draft control is up and then you can loosen these four bolts with an 11 16 inch wrench. And then you can move that plate either forward or back depending on what type of adjustment you need. So here, you can see that whole plate move forward. That's what you want to happen, or you can move it backwards if your problem is the opposite way. Get it adjusted accordingly, the way that it needs to be on your tractor, then tighten up these four bolts. Make sure that your hydraulic or your three-point components are all put back together, the center pin as well. Put the seat back on your tractor, and then you're all set to use your hydraulics on your tractor again.